Hey guys, so my deep topic of conversation is threshold. And I do plan on writing a blog about it um, whenever I get to it. I always say that I am and I don't, I get distracted. Um, but um, I have, and I've already said this in videos, but I'll just repeat it since this is my longer one. I have been feeling extremely ill to my stomach. Like I feel sick and it keeps getting worse and um, it's not constant. It's like it fluctuates through the day. And um, on top of that, when I sleep, I'm sleeping really hard. And when I get up from sleeping, um, I am off balance and wobbly and feel like I'm just going to collapse. And even when I get up from the sofa to go to bed at night, like I am like stumbling all around. So, um, it's out of character for where I'm at in this point and, you know, like my recovery. So it's a bit concerning and, um, I don't know if I have a shunt malfunction um, because I'm checking off two of the boxes of what, you know, a valve malfunction is. And um, I know that the appropriate thing to do is to call my neurosurgeon and let her know what's going on. I just was kind of giving it a while because I've been under tremendous stress at work. Um, and that's a complete understatement, to be honest, and um, for the past two weeks. And when I get very stressed out, I, I get sick to my stomach. And it's like, um, you know, so that, that's why I'm like, is this just stress related or am I having a valve monk? malfunction you know like am I getting inside my head like I just don't know anymore so it, it's just a crappy situation and the reason why it's crappy is because I know when I put my call into the neurosurgeon she's going to tell me to go to the ER and go get a CT scan which is the appropriate protocol to do but here's my hang up is um, while I really want to do that, there's the financial aspect of it that's keeping me from doing it. And the financial aspect keeps a lot of Americans from doing what they need to do for better health outcomes. So I have health insurance. I pay money into it per month. Every year it goes up per usual. Um, every year the deductible goes up and the out-of-pocket max so you know it's great um so you know last year with my event um you know i way over you know I, everything from that event um i hit all the boxes of what i need to meet on you know before they cover a hundred percent so um i didn't have you know from that point on, anytime I did have something go on, I wasn't afraid to seek medical attention. And thank God, because when I fell over and was like, okay, um, this isn't right, you know, I wasn't worried about the financial aspect. I made a call. My neurosurgeon said, go down to the emergency room, get a CT scan. And that's when they found out that I had hydrocephalus and I had so much built up that like, um, it was very alarming. So, you know, they had to do a BP shunt to put it, but you know, I wasn't afraid and you know, I've been, um, a klutz and I've hit my head and I've had to go in and get scans and you know, here we go. We started a new calendar year of benefits. So went up and I, now I'm like, um, I've already had to like stress myself out to the max to argue with um, the radiology department at the hospital that I love 
um, where my neurosurgeon's at, to go down from $3,400 out of pocket up front to $340. Um, and that was very stressful to do. I think, um, you know, my keyword was, uh, well, I guess when I have like a ruptured aneurysm, I'll see you then. So I don't know if that was like a liability thing on their end. And they were like, well, let me see what we can do. But I wasn't rude either. I will say that you're not going to get anywhere by being rude. I was very nice. I just was like, you know, trying to say, well, I guess I'll get it if something happens then. So it worked out great. Um, well, it worked out to my benefit on that. So I get to have the angiogram in a couple weeks. But, you know, I'm still like with the CT scan, you know, I just, it's not like I, like m money, you know, it just, it, it really sucks. And like, I, I've always been about like, I don't, I've not been a fan of socialized medicine. I see the advantages of it that, you know, um, you don't have to worry about that stuff. And then I see the disadvantages of, you know, having to wait long periods to get stuff done um, or hoops you have to jump through. Whereas with private insurance, you know, you don't have those hoops to jump through and so forth. But, you know, I, I've always, you know, always been all about you know private health insurance companies and slowly they've been merging into like um, the smaller ones are merging into the larger ones so there really isn't that much competition anymore so um, that takes away my whole thought process on private health insurance um, but you know to each their own on their thought um, I'm not like trying to advocate for that or like you know argue someone against it it's just my personal view although it is altering um you know because i'm going through it i guess you don't see the other side of it until you go through something and that's the truth um so i don't know but like i said like i'm just trying to wait it out you know, because um, work has been excessively stressful the past couple of weeks. Um, very, very, very stressful. And, um, you know, and like I said, I get sick when I'm stressed. So I just, I don't know, like, do you just wait it out? Or, you know, what what is the moment that you go, okay, let's get this checked out. I've been sitting on this for two weeks and it's like, but I've been under stress for two weeks. So I, I'm still trying to find that. And then, you know, I feel good and then I'm like, okay, it's, it's fine, you know, and then it comes back. So it's just this like teeter totter thing, you know, of, of, what is stress and what is a VP malfunction? And I remember having a conversation with my neurosurgeon, like, how do I know that there is a malfunction? Because the list that they give you, it could be a, anything, anything, any little illness, you just don't know. And she's like, I understand, but you'll know. So I guess it's like, I'm at that point where I kind of know but I don't want to admit that I know. So I'm doing a disservice to myself, truthfully, but I hope to God it is just stress related, even though I don't want any stress. Um, I just, I don't want that. I don't want stress. So um, nothing I can do about it though. I mean, it's work. Who doesn't have a, um, work life that isn't stressful. So, you know, what can I do? Um, but rest. And I'm like holding on to like my angiogram and, and like bring it up then, but I don't know. It's just, 
irresponsible in the age you got. So, and I always tell people, if you don't feel that something's right, you need to seek out like, you know, medical, you know, contact the right people to get answers. Like you can't rely on like a community of people to give you an answer. So that's why I'm not sitting here asking, what do you guys think it is? I'm just explaining what I'm going through and my thought process on trying to figure out like, okay, when do I go ahead and, and say, I'm going to call the doctor and forget about the financial stuff. Um, cause it's just so expensive. It really is. I mean, I'm just like, we're like, we're, su there's supposed to be price transparency. Like, I don't see that. I don't see that. Nowhere did I get like some kind of booklet that said, hey, you're up for an angiogram and this is the estimate. Would have been nice to have, you know, so maybe I could kind of figure things out or plan or whatever. So I guess my advice to anyone with health insurance is every year, Look at your deductible, out-of-pocket max, and save, 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 and put it in your emergency fund. That way you can apply it there. I know it's hard because there's just so many things that come up where you got to tap into your emergency fund. And, you know, um, physicians are going to do whatever they can to get their recoup money because um, elective surgeries have gone down um, because of COVID and so hospital systems are feeling the crush of like the amount of um, you know their emergency rooms are full but you know the um, ambulatory side you know they're losing money because people are just not seeking out medical care like they used to because they're all staying home or they're utilizing telehealth. So, you know, it's just a financial crunch on them. And so some of them are raising, but like there's just rules and laws and everything that goes in with like, you know, in, you know, CMS guidelines of, you know, what you can charge, you know, um, a patient. On their care so um, my advice is if you know that you haven't met anything and you know that you are going to have some type of procedure make a checklist and have the checklist be is it done what's the facility it's being done in? who, you know, is my neurosurgeon, um, part of that network, but you know, they're not out of network, you know, for that place of service, um, is the anesthesiologist in network. Um, and then, I, you know, what procedures being done and, um, that way when you call, be like, okay, um, what's the facility? Um, you know, um, the place of service, um, what, you know, what angiogram, you know, for instance, what's the CPT code, um, which is a procedural code, um, ask for that. And then, um, you know, ask for the anesthesiologist and, you know, um, to check to see if they're in network and, you know, um, that way you can make calls to your insurance company and see, you know, are they in network or out of network? And if not, then, you know, you can call and inquire prices. That way you, you know, have it all set out like of what it's going to be. Because a lot of times people will have surgeries and um, the place of service, your physician may be in network, but the place of service that you're having it done at is out of network. 
or everything's in network, but your anesthesiologist is out of network, but they're a team, but they all have different, you know, tax identification numbers and, you know, um, have been credentialed differently by, you know, insurance company. So your package team is not all packaged the same as what they're credentialing, um, what they've agreed to on insurance contracts. So, you know, it's just a, a checklist to go through and just, you know, that way you're not surprised if it's something that, you know, is going to happen ahead of time. Me, I knew this. Did I do it? Absolutely not. I didn't do it. No, I didn't. And that's my own fault. And I'm, I'm smarter than that. And I know that I sh probably should have done that. But um, I guess like three days before my procedure, I wasn't expecting like, hey, cough up $3,400. And I'm like, you are funny. That is funny. Three days before my procedure, you're asking for $3,400? Do you have $3,400? No. Thank you for the three-day notice. Since I didn't get any type of calls, I figured you guys were just going to let me come in and bill my insurance and then send me a bill and then make a payment plan. So, that's why I had to get you scheduled. <laughs> so, my dogs don't like it. They really don't. Right? No, you don't like it. You guys don't even have insurance. Pet insurance is crap, too. So, don't let me get started on that. But, so, anyways. Um, I, um, so I planned on, like, this weekend, you know, um, helping and doing some graphic art stuff, you know, on the side. I did, because that's something that I like to do. And I had to cancel it because I just don't feel good. And um, on top of that, I opened up my closet door and my whole rack broke, came off, and um, all my clothes are down. And so I'm like, now I've got to call to have them fix it. I know small problem but you know I had to like today I had to like get all the clothes out and organized and then I had to buy like some shelving um and some more garment bags or whatever just to get it more organized um because it's a complete nightmare um I it's just a I don't know so um I gotta work on that too this weekend of um, clearing that up. So, um, I'm gonna rest and do that. I don't know. Just, I just am like in like a state of like, can I get a break? little break so I know what's gonna happen is I am probably gonna take a nap and I'll probably sleep until like 10 o'clock I won't be up till like 3 in the morning and then I'll sleep till like 1 or 2 in the afternoon and then there goes my whole weekend and you know going back to stress week so You know, these are just like, uh, like stressful things that are just been going on. And so I, you know, I was going to write a, you know, the blog was, what is your 
threshold? Like, when do you say enough is enough? Or when do you just like, who cares? You know, like, I am at that point where I'm like, I have a threshold of, you know, um, what I can and cannot do. And um, there's also like a respect level too that like I have a threshold that I expect people to be respectful to me. And um, you know, I, I like I'm starting to draw the line on that. Um, and you know, there's just so many other things and it's like um, learning your threshold is very important because if you do not know what your threshold is to draw that line, you will be swallowed down into despair and self-loathing, hate, irritable, woe is me, you name it. I'm going through it, so trust me, I know. And you know, it's just like personal accountability on like, what can you do? You have suffered a major brain trauma and your brain is trained to heal. And it does not happen overnight. It doesn't happen in a year. It is ongoing. You have this for the rest of your life. And as time goes on, you get more in tune to your body what's going on and then you start becoming more emotionally aware of like what your threshold is and what you will not put up with anymore and that you know you start eliminating things that just don't give you what you need so you know um i i've done that on certain things like um you know uh there are some friends that like you know just um we're not, um, they're not beneficial. I look, let me say that. Um, they were, oh, I don't know. Like it was a glossy friendship. It was it's a, a facade type thing, you know, where you think that they're, they're your friends, you've been there for them. And then, you know, if you just, um, you don't fit their lifestyle anymore, you know, bye. So bye. See you later. You know, I don't, I don't need you either. So, um, that's something to learn. Like when to say goodbye to like negativity. So, and it, it just is constant too. It's just does like, Here's the other thing I need to stop doing. So I get on Facebook and I look at news articles. And so like, you know, the news articles are, it's clickbait. I know what it is. So it's like these like graphic photos with like a title that is just so alarming because they're doing exact, they're trying to get you to click on their story. And then when you click on the story and read it, like, you know, it makes sense and you're like, okay, but not a lot of people will click on the story and like, just see this big headline with, you know, this picture and like, everyone's just fighting about it. And, you know, I made a comment like, you know, that about clickbaiting and gaslighting and, you know, like us all getting along and healing and blah, blah, blah. And I was totally demonized for saying, let's get along. Um, so, you know, pretty much like go to hell for saying get along. To me, that's just so funny. I just, I don't know why I click on these stories. It just like, it, I'm torturing myself. So I know I need to stop it. I don't know why I do it. Um, you know, sometimes I say things, everything I say though, I stand by it and I'm never rude and there's nothing you can go back on and be like, Oh, excuse me. Like I am so like watching my words and you know, just saying like, 
you know, like there's so much more to life. Like we just need to get back on track, but that's a whole different subject that has really nothing to do with your trauma. So, or maybe because of brain trauma, maybe I just feel more enlightened, like appreciative of life. And I mean, like, look, it could be a lot worse. So it really could, but I don't know guys. I just, it's just up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down for me. So, you know, as expected, the first year is such a learning experience. And then, you know, I thought like, you know, the second year would be a little bit different. And, um, you know, I never really like two months into my second year of this, um, not even and like I'm already like feeling defeated and I mean there's so much more to go but it, it has not started off on the right foot for me so um so this is the time that I have to sit back and take major inventory on what is what is bothering me like and what is frustrating me what can I help? What can't I help? Um, for the things that I can't help, how can I move on from that? And so forth. So, you know, it's just critical thinking of, you know, trying to realize some things. So, and I know life does not go as we expect it to. So I know that, but, um, I don't, I, I guess I had just like more expectations and, um, you know, I exceeded my goals that I made for myself. So I could just, I'm just beating myself up for things that I can't help, but, um, I just am like, I hate that I feel this way. Like, like I'm just, you know, so sick and it's like, this could be such, this could be a medical issue going on. Um, or it could be just complete and utter stress. And I just desperately want to figure it out without it costing me thousands of dollars. So that's it. That is it. So, I'm trying to like relax as much as possible. I wish, I wish I was built in a way that like, I'm so envious of people who are just like, you know, just so calm and relaxed and like, it's not that big. And I'm more like a huge ball of energy and passionate and just like, why, 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 why? And figure it out. And I just, I desperately want to get to that level. And I don't think it's, it's in my DNA to be that way that like I was not meant to be like, you know, peace and just chill and relax. It's, it's not in me. It just isn't. So I figure how to channel this energy into something else, because if the stomach stuff and everything is stress, how am I going to channel that out? If it's medical, then, you know, okay, I feel justified, but um, I don't know. It's a learning game, guys. It, it really is. So, um, I'm here just throwing out, you know, what I am struggling with. Um, that way, if anyone comes across it and feels the same way, you don't feel isolated. It is, um, 
this is this is emotions they happen with or without a brain injury everyone goes through these like hurdles of like you know having to make decisions that make an impact or how does something like nurture you and what like you know crushes you and you know there's just so many things and you know life just seems heavier with everything going on in this world and um so that's an extra thing you know so um i am trying my best to figure everything out and when i figure more things out i will let you know but i know i will never figure it all out and i've got to let that go i've got to let that go i am not a problem solver um I mean, to a degree. So, anyways, this is just topic of discussion. It's more like um, a venting session, if you will, for me to vent about how I'm feeling and my frustration. And, um, you know, I just, I... I'm in desperate need of a good week and I know it will get better and I know there will be good weeks ahead and that's what gets me through is like I'm thinking forward um like I have to like I cannot be a pessimist I have to be an optimist you have no no mm -hmm. other choice to be an optimist so um, it's something that is not in my nature to be an optimist, but I am, and I'm trying to be like, so you had two bad weeks, and, um, but there's so many days in the year that, I mean, things will be different, so you might have a good week or a bad week, so is life, um, and I know, like, when things are bad, that's more at the forefront. And the good things are kind of brushed under for some reason. And it's like, every time something good happens, I really just need to start documenting that. And I think I've said that before, that, like, usually when I write, it's about, like, something I'm feeling and it's a negative feeling or frustration. And I need another book of, like things that went good for the day and I, that way I can refer to that and I've also said that like celebrate like the small things you don't have to have like a huge thing that goes on but like you know um like today it's like 62 degrees I mean awesome like I will write that down it is not cold out, you know, 62 degrees. The sun is out. Um, that's great. Like, that's what I need to start writing down. I need to start taking inventory on, like, the small things that are good and look back on that. And, you know, because we all have been taught that, like, you know, when you're feeling emotional or angry, write it out and get it out. But, you know, we're not taught that when you feel great about something, document it and get it out, you know? Um, and I, I think that's something that should be put into practice is um, as small as it is, write it down as a memory and to keep inventory of everything that's gone right because I guarantee you at the end of the week, if you put everything good that happened and compare it to everything that was bad that happened, I guarantee you the good will over, like, you know, be way up compared to the bad. But, you know, the bad things are always more obvious, more felt, more impactful. Um, and it, it, it's a narrator. And, um, you know, the small great things aren't so it, it's like just changing that behavior over so 
that's something that I'm going to start doing is I have, you know, I do have a journal where I document things that have gone wrong. Um, and that's kind of what helps me build my blogs up. Um, but you know, I want to get a separate journal and just put down like, like good things that have been done. And even if it seems tedious at first, where like I'm documenting, like, you know, the dog came up and curled and snuggled with me. Plus it made me feel good. Or, you know, um, the coffee was great. It felt great. You know, and just writing it seems so tedious, like every little tiny thing, but trust me, it's just, it, it will get better. It will make you shift that mind frame of like, ugh, to like, okay, was it that bad? So it's just a suggestion. Um, I haven't even tried it yet, but it's just something that I think I'm going to do. So anyways, that's a story. Next week's my angiogram. Wish me luck. Um, I'm not looking forward to it. Um, you know, when I've had the angiograms, I was in the hospital, so I was all nice and drugged up all the time. And like, um, you know, I was in an ICU room being taken care of. And now that I'm having an angiogram done, um, and uh, I'm in observation for five hours after it's done um, to make sure I'm not bleeding out <laughs> because of the femoral artery they're going through. Um, and then after that, I go home and then I have to like, you know, shower for 24 hours and then um, keep bandage and like that's just going to be weird because now I'm like taking care of myself where when I've had it done it's been in the hospital so I don't know but the 24 hour no shower thing that is okay because I remember when I was like after my um first time I got discharged from the hospital after my craniotomy um and being in the neuroscience ICU for several weeks. Um, like I couldn't take a shower for quite some time. And then when I had my baby shunt, I definitely couldn't. So I was rolling on like several days of no showers. <laughs> it was so disgusting. Ugh. So 24 hours. That's okay. That's okay. I can live with that. So Anyways, have a good weekend, guys, and um, like I said, just a venting session. Um, enjoy the weekend. Find happiness somehow, some way, whatever. Um, I wish you could see what my dog looks like right now, and it would probably bring you happiness, but she kind of looks like a gremlin right now because she just got up and her eyes are just like and her hair is all over the place you you are a hot mess hot mess express i don't know if i even 